call the Owatonna City Council meeting for Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017 to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Okerberg. Here. Dodson. Here. Burbank. Here. Rainey. Here. Svenby. Here. Schultz. Here. Mayor Kuntz. Here. We have six of the council and the mayor present. Thank you. We all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Well, being this is the first meeting of the year, we have a little bit of business to do. First, we got to swear some people into office. Chris, are you going to do that? I will do the honors. Yes, sir. I ask Mayor Coons, Kevin Rainey, Greg Schultz, Doug Boss. Uh, we need to elect a council president and a council vice president now. Uh, do we have any nominations for council president? I nominate Greg Schultz as our president. Sure. Positive. Okay. <laughs> Second. Uh, okay. Well, thanks, Brent. Mm -hmm. Any other nominations? Any others? Any others? So be it. I guess it's done. Uh, elect, uh, council Vice President. Do have any nominations for Vice President? I'll nominate Kevin Rainey. Do you have a second? Second. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Done. Congratulations, Kevin. Okay, now we need to have approval of the agenda for this evening. Do I hear a motion for that? So moved. So moved by Nate to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, <clears throat> because this is the first meeting of the year, we have a number of organizational things to do. There's a number of resolutions. And we'll go to Chris for this. Thank you, Greg. Um, resolution 117 designates our depositories and authorized signatures. Uh, the state auditor recommends that we do this annually uh, for the upcoming year and formally appoint individuals authorized to disperse funds. Uh, the resolution authorizes the mayor, city administrator, and finance director uh, to sign checks and the accounting analyst, accounting technician to disperse funds through check electronic funds transfer, wire, or ACH. Uh, staff would recommend approval of this resolution. Any questions of Chris on this one? Motion to approve. Motion by Kevin uh, Rainey to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Nate Dodson. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next one, Chris. 
Uh, this is approval of the resolution 217 to designate a responsible authority to administer the requirements under the Data Practices Act. Uh, city must annually do this. Typically, the chief administrative official serves in that capacity, and that would be myself. Um, so staff would recommend approval of the resolution. Any questions of this? A motion to approve resolution 2-17. Motion by Brent to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Dave Burbank. Uh, any other discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is uh, changing the meeting dates during the 2017 year. Uh, yes, we typically look at the calendar in the upcoming year and see if there's a conflict. Uh, and traditionally, we've moved it to the previous day. Um, however, the way the calendar works, um, the, there are five Tuesdays in the months of August and January that would make it uh, easier for us to move to the second and fourth Tuesdays. However, in talking with Troy, we will conflict with one uh, planning commission is on the fourth Tuesday, right? Planning commission meets on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. So actually on those proposed uh, those four proposed dates, three of them are when we would have planning commission in the council chambers. And those meetings start at 5.30. And depending on what's on the agenda, could go up to or beyond 7. So, so maybe we would want to um, then stick with the previous Monday as we had in the past. Or the August ones? Or, or the August ones. So that'd be like July 31st and August 14th? Yes. For the August meetings? And then the um, the January, do, you don't have a conflict with the January one, do you? January 9th we would, but not the 23rd. Not the 23rd. Okay. So, <coughs> so we could then go, I suppose, to that... Um, can we meet on January 3rd, that Wednesday? Is that a problem? Right. We, we could stay on that Tuesday. It's just that it's really a rush. I mean, like tonight, too, we've got some additions to the agenda, and that's where the last two years we actually had that extra week with the holidays to put that third week there between the oh. December and January meeting. So that's what we were trying to do it again sure. for next year so that we wouldn't have it. I mean, and and I've had one person that's actually asked because they're planning, hoping to do a, a extended, a longer vacation past the first of the year as well. So the January 9th would be that uh, Monday. The 8th? Do it the go to the Monday the 8th or go to, the 9th is on a... No, for 17, or no. For 18. For 18, 18, 18 right, 18. I'm sorry, yeah. So if we went to that Monday, Mm -hmm. We want to do that? Monday, January 8th. 8th. We that on January one. 8th. Are we on the same page here or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, Monday, January 8th. It would still give us a three-week period there between the December and January meetings versus between the January yeah. and the February meetings. Yeah. And the um, January the 15th, um, that week is also Martin Luther King <laughs> Day. So like even this year, we're going to have a holiday again before our next meeting. We won't be in next Monday, two weeks from now. So that's where for this January of 18, if we could go that week of the second and fourth week, it would really be nicer. Are we, we talking do the Monday. those Mondays then? Are we talking on a Monday? The 8th is Monday. And then the, like yeah, the then 20th. we won't conflict with um, Planning Commission. Then do we need to go to the, like so, the 22nd on January? We can leave that one on a Tuesday, whatever you want to do. That's not a problem, Troy, the 23rd? The 23rd is not because in the months of November, December, January, February, Planning Commission only meets once a month, and that's the second Tuesday. Okay. So we could stick with the January 23rd. <laughs> all right, to be so clear. So I'm thoroughly confused. Tell me what days we're talking about. All right, to be <laughs> clear. So in August, 
we're going to have to switch to that Monday before, which would be July 31st. I don't have my calendar in front mm -hmm. of me. Um, and then in for the August 15th, <coughs> we will meet on the 14th, that Monday. Okay. And then looking way ahead to January, uh, January of 18, 2018, <coughs> we will meet on uh, January 8th. Monday, January 8th. Monday, January 8th. And then um, also January 23rd would be the second meeting in January 2018. For those August dates, you could just move them up a day too and have it on August 7th or August 21st. If you're looking to get that extra week in there before. Yeah, it doesn't. That one doesn't matter so much. It's just that if you meet that Monday night on the 31st, then you've got Tuesday night, night to night. You know, and if you leave it on the 14th, you've got a, a meeting on Monday night, and then you've got opening fair on Tuesday night, and that's going into the fair. So that's why I was going that next, we were looking to go to that following week. Do you want the meeting with the week of the fair and with the week of night to night, or do you want to do it the following week? Even if we do it on Monday. <coughs> well, you could do it on the Monday following the, their normal scheduled. So meeting. Monday the seventh. The seventh and the twenty-first. Monday the twenty-first. The seventh and the twenty-first. Yeah. I, I think for me, uh, July thirty-first and August fourteenth work. I can't make the other two dates work for okay. my job. So. Okay. Okay. So we'll stick with that then. On July thirty-first. For the first meeting in August, and then the um, August 14th. August 14th. So we had July 31st, August 14th, and then in January 2018, the 8th and the 23rd. Yes. Okay. All right. Got it. Got it. Any other questions? It's fine. Uh, a motion to approve this. So moved. A motion by Nate. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Brent. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next is a designate the Watana People's Press as the official newspaper of the city in 2017. Our charter requires that each year during the first regular council meeting that we designate a newspaper of general circulation and the People's Press fits that designation very nicely and staff would recommend approval. Any questions of Chris? Do I hear a motion to for that? Motion to approve. Motion by Jeff to approve. A second? Second. Second by Dave. Any other questions? Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is to appoint uh, Fire Chief Johnson as the weed inspector during 2017. I know Mike looks forward to this each and every year. Um, he has fulfilled these duties and does very well, uh, and it's a good point of contact for our residents concerning those uh, weed and nuisance violations. So staff would recommend appointing Fire Chief Michael Johnson as a weed inspector for 2017. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion by Brent to approve. Second. Second by Kevin. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the last one is to approve the boards and commissions the council represents that we discussed earlier. So, I will just recap for um, council. Uh, we met in a study session and discussed, and uh, council has agreed to the following committee assignments for the Economic Development Authority. Uh, current members members will be Kevin Rainey, Jeff Okeberg, Doug Voss. For the Owatonna Area Business Development Center will uh, be Nate Dotson and Doug Voss. The Law Enforcement Center Committee will be Jeff Okerberg and Dave Burbank. Highway 14 Partnership will be Dave Burbank, Brent Swenby, Kevin Rainey, and Nate Dotson. The <coughs> Joint Powers Board, the 911 Board, will be Jeff Okerberg and Dave Burbank will be a reserve or a backup. Uh, for the new committee of a joint city county transportation committee will be uh, Greg Schultz and Kevin Rainey. 
So staff would recommend approval. Any questions on that? Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion by David Burbank, uh, second. Second. Who is it? Brent, second by Brent. Any further discussion? Uh, there be none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There, that takes care of our uh, beginning of the year stuff. So, if I get to do something different now, it's a lot, we have the finance report, and I've been reading it for quite a few years, and now that Kevin's vice president, he can read it. <laughs> okay. Okay, recap, uh, everything over $25,000, $201,386 to North American Title. That's the purchase of 122 West Vine and Stony Creek Drive lot. $21,052 to JJD Companies Water Main Replacement. $43,640 to Nuss Trucking and Equipment for a Snow Plow. $25,994 to OPG-3 Balance of the Laser Fish Purchase. $160,418 to the Steele County Auditor for the LEC Shared Expenses. $86,070 to Wenzel Construction, that is for the south, Southeast Storm Sewer Project. $65,900 to North American Title, that's the purchase of 810 North Oak. $115,769 for Southeast Service Cooperative, that's the December insurance premiums. Other expenditure, expenditures totaled $289,125 for a subtotal of one million nine thousand three hundred fifty six dollars also in this is a seventy four thousand three hundred forty nine dollar hra section eight payment that brings the total tonight to one million eighty three thousand seven hundred five dollars seventy two cents thank you kevin we've heard the financial report uh any questions on it there be none i look for a motion to approve it motion to approve the pills pay the bills motion by jeff to approve do we hear a second 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 by Nate. Any further questions? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we go to the consent agenda. That is a grouping of uh, all permits and licenses and board and commission minutes, department reports, contracts and agreements, and other miscellaneous items. They are grouped together for one motion. Um, what are the wishes of the council on the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion by Kevin Rainey to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dave Burbank. Do we have any discussion on the consent agenda? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> now we'll go to action items. First uh, item is a license. It's a 3.1.1. It's an on sale wine and 3.32 malt liquor sales license for E and AZ Sushi Inc. doing business as Mizuki Fusion at 119 West Bridge, Bridge Street. And we'll go to Chris on this one. Thank you, Greg. Current licensee at this location is Chen Fang Mizuki Fusion Incorporated. Um, they recently restructured their company and they have a new corporate name, E and AZ Sushi doing business as Mizuki Fusion. Uh, the new licenses will replace the current licenses and expire in June of 2017. We've received all of the required uh, certificates of insurance and the application fee of $100. Um, so staff would recommend approval of the license application. You've heard staff comments on that. Any further questions of staff? There be none. What are the council's wishes? Motion to approve. Motion by Nate to approve. Do we have a second? Okay. Second. Second by Doug Voss. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, any further discussion? There be none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Get it just gone. I'll eat there. I will go to, uh, we have a number of ordinances to go through. Uh, they're all second readings. We'll, uh, we'll go to Mark for these. The first one is 3.2.1. The second reading of the proposed ordinance 1816 on data requests. Mark? The next uh, four ordinances all deal with the uh, recognition and uh, imposition of increases in certain fees uh, that are in the ordinance code. The uh, ordinance 1816 recognized the city administrator as the responsible authority as you did tonight under the data practices act and authorizes a collection of 25 cents for each page 
up to 100 page unless there's a um, extraordinary request and then it's the actual cost of the city's request and this is a second reading there been no changes okay thank you mark uh what are the council's wishes on this ordinance they have a motion motion to approve motion by jeff to approve do we have a second 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 by brent any further questions there being none, we'll have a vote, and this is a roll call. Councilmember Okerberg? Aye. Dodson? Aye. Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Svenby? Aye. Voss? Aye. Schultz? Aye. All seven ayes. Motion carries. Second one is uh, the second reading of proposed ordinance number 1916, special <laughs> assessment searches. And this uh, ordinance uh, authorizes the city administrator to impose a fee, to collect a fee, uh, when the administrator uh, certifies as to the amount of assessments that may be owed on a parcel of property. Um, and then the fee is set in the Schedule A, but it, this authorizes the collection of that fee. Okay, thank you, Mark. Any further questions of Mark on this one? Motion to approve Ordinance 19-16. Motion by Brent Svenby to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Dave Burbank. Any further discussion? There being none, we'll have roll call. Councilmember Okerberg? Aye. Dodson? Aye. Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Svenby? Aye. Voss? Aye. Schultz? Aye. All seven ayes. Motion carries. Third one is 3.2.3, .3, the second reading of proposed ordinance 20-16, noise exceptions. 2016 uh, authorizes a, a fee uh, where an individual wants to get a private exception to the noise ordinance where a fee was not authorized before. And so this authorizes the, the imposition and collection of that fee. Okay, any further questions of Mark? Motion to approve. Motion by Kevin Rainey to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by... Stereo. Nate. All right. I'll the stereo, it. Nate. Okay. It was me then. <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion? Uh, there being none, we'll have roll call. Councilmember Okerberg? Aye. Dodson? Aye. Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Spenby? Aye. Voss? Aye. And Schultz? Aye. Motion carries. Next is 3.2.4, the second reading of proposed ordinance 21-16 uh, to amend Appendix A to include fees. And uh, there's been no change in this. Appendix A is the uh, sheets in the ordinance code that set forth the various fees and charges. And so this is putting on Appendix A the, um, the new fees that you've authorized uh, uh, today. And uh, so they're set forth there, and it's uh, no change from the previous reading. Okay, thank you. Any questions of Mr. Walbrin? Uh, there being none, I, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. A motion by Brent Svenby, a second? Second. Second by Doug Voss. Any further discussion? There being none, we'll have roll call. Councilmember Okerberg? Aye. Dotson? Aye. Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Spenby? Aye. Voss? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Next is 3.2.5, the second reading of proposed ordinance 22-16 to amend the Shade Tree Ordinance 97.00. That goes to this one goes to I'll, Kyle. I'll take oh. that one. Um, so this is a second reading for the amendments to the um, shade tree ordinance. The main changes were we combined all the shade tree pests into one section for management, and we um, made some changes to the approved uh, boulevard <laughs> tree list. Uh, this revision came up about as part of the 2013 community forest bonding grant um, that we received and the um, threat the future threat of emerald ash borer. Uh, staff recommends approval thank you kyle any questions for kyle kyle does uh, dnr are they really recognize this as a serious problem and they Kind of has it moved to the top of their list um, dealing with the uh, emerald ash borers? You know, they've been tracking it. Um, it's relatively close to us now. Um, I think it's just a matter of time before uh, we'll see it here. So uh, I know we've got us. You know, they as they quarantine counties, working to uh, prevent the spread, um, but. 
do we, I know we have a study session coming up um, to deal with this. Do we have to wait till spring to be effective or can anything be done in the winter with this problem? Well, really, we, it hasn't been found here yet, so... Okay. Any treatment of trees? Um, treatment is one one option, and, you know, as we come across ash trees in the boulevard, rather than working on them, trimming them, we've been removing them. Okay. So um, that's a small portion. Obviously, there's a lot of them in the parks, um, and it's going to be a, a large expense. Um, we will have to get a inventory at some point and you know maybe identify some that could be treated the treatment what i'm hearing prolongs their life but doesn't protect them definitely um, um i noticed in reading about the uh the powers of the city forester that there may come a time when they will actually have authority to go on private property and and have a uh, a resident remove ash trees if if they don't on their own yeah and and we actually do that now with uh elm trees so we're not we're not extending any authority that they don't have it would just extend to ash and and elm okay. um, what i understand is once the tree dies from the emerald ash borer they become brittle and uh, are at risk of falling within a relatively short amount of time six to twelve months from the time they're dead they're starting to drop limbs which can be a big problem um, so but okay. currently we we do go when we have dead elm trees on property and work with the property owners and it is in our ordinance to um, get those removed um, so it really wouldn't be extending any new powers. It would just be including the ash tree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Chris, a question I've got is in regards to ash trees in our parks. Uh, like Kyle said, we've got a lot of them. Um, I think we're going to start seeing some uh, dying trees. Are we currently, do we have a spot where we are planting small trees right now so that should we lose a bunch of ash we can replace them rather quickly with a shade tree as opposed to something that's going to take 15 years to to develop I, I know that they do have a nursery their own nursery that they have been growing different trees um, yes so I, I think essentially we'll have some you know how old they are what state the state they're in right now I don't know Okay, thank you. Here, Tom. There is one advantage of the cold weather. As I said on Channel 5 News, if you get down to that 25 to 30 below, it does kill the emerald ash borers. So uh, a cold winter has got a benefit to that area. It's rude for a cold winter. <laughs> so you support a low 25 below zero is what you're saying. Maybe for a week at a time, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions of Kyle? Motion to approve. Motion by Kevin Rainey to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Nate Dotson. Any further discussion? <laughs> Being none, we'll have roll call. Councilmember Okerberg? Aye. Dotson? Aye. Rain, or Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Svenby? Aye. Boss? Aye. And Schultz? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, next up is resolution 3-17 to accept the feasibility report and set a date for a public hearing for the 2017 street and utility projects. And this will go to Kyle. Um, we are looking at our project, our, this is our um, catch-all project for 2017, the street and utility project. Uh, we have um, the, the following streets, and there's quite a number of them. Uh, Radle Place, 12th Street Northeast from 3rd Avenue to Elm, 13th Street Northeast from 3rd Avenue to Elm, Mound, uh, Franklin to Selby, Bryant Avenue Southwest, Martin Street Southwest, Valley Avenue Southwest, those are all kind of right in the same area, Cindy Lane Southwest, and then we're also looking at the Godfather's Alley um, from Oakdale to 18th Street Southwest and the alley from Lincoln to Chambers on the south side of Agnes is in uh, really uh, poor shape. Um, the total project cost 
is uh, just over two million dollars at two million sixteen thousand one hundred and forty four dollars of that we're proposing to have assessments of a little over twenty percent of the total project at four hundred and sixty two thousand two hundred and forty dollars and sixty three cents um, we are uh, proposing to have a neighborhood meeting on this um, the date on that I believe was going to be the 24th of on page uh, four you have a picture. January 31st I'm, I'm wrong that the proposed meeting would be uh, neighborhood meeting would be January 31st um, costs are coming in at Most of them, other than the alleys, we're looking at uh, $52 per foot. They're higher than that, um, but that is our current cap. We're recommending that that cap stay the same for 2017. Uh, the alley on uh, Lincoln to Chambers uh, would be about $22.72 per foot. Um, we did evaluate other options for the, uh, as you most of you re recall, we had uh, some concern from property owners over uh, possibly going to concrete for um, that alley behind Godfather's. Um, I guess we don't have a better way to describe that one. Um, the costs were considerably more. Um, we propo we're proposing, and I'm recommending a compromise that normally we'd go with four inches of bituminous surfacing in an alley. Because of the heavier truck traffic in this alley, um, I'm recommending uh, five inches of bituminous, which is um, thicker than our normal section. It would be more reasonable um, cost-wise and um, would provide that extra life that the uh, um, there was a couple of concerned property owners there, so uh, that is our recommendation. And I expect there'll be further discussion at the um, neighborhood meeting, um, and I, I'll probably try and get together with that property owner prior to the 31st. <laughs> um, other than that, it's quite a extensive list. We'll see how uh, the neighborhoods react to the uh, proposed improvements and the costs. And um, I have a recommendation for you on uh, February 7th. So, Ms. Kyle, I did have a quick question. You kind of answered it on the Godfather's Alley. And with, this has been going on for a number of years, and are we kind of all on the same page with the owners out there? I, uh, you know, I think. It, the, the only way we would alter from that recommendation and go with the concrete is if we had consensus from the adjoining property owners to that they would pay more than the $52. Um, you know, putting in a concrete alley in that location, I'm trying to get my, I've got, the, got it in the estimates, um, but it is considerably more expensive. Um, and, you know, obviously with a lot of need around town, it would be, in my opinion, better to um, so better to use that money elsewhere. Um, went from a cost of uh, $49 per foot on um, four inches of bituminous to you know, just over $52 to add that extra um, inch of thickness. Um, where we would go to $78 per foot. So our, the city's cost would increase by $26 per foot. Uh, and that's both sides, so it would be $52 on the center line footage um, to go to the concrete. So it's, you know, uh, the city's cost goes up $20,000 over the five inch um, bituminous. And that's, uh, actually it's more than that. I don't think that's. I would, if we kept the $52 per foot, we would go from uh, our share of 52000 to uh, about 95000 So So our cost would go up about $40,000. Okay, thank, thank you, Kyle. Any other questions, Kyle? Eight? How much longer would you anticipate the concrete would last over the 5-inch bituminous? Our um, assessment 
our policy, I believe, is it's either 20 or 25 years on um, bituminous. I think it's 20 and um, 40 years on concrete. So you you do double the life approximately. Um, you can overlay the bituminous solo in this location with the tie-in points the way they are. It is going to be difficult to do an overlay um, in the future. So. I would say 20 to 25 years on the bituminous and uh, 40 on the concrete. Um, so. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, what are the council's wishes on the feasibility study? Motion to approve. Motion by Nate Dodson approved. I hear a second. And I'll second that because it's going to be a good year for Ward 3. We, we actually, <laughs> just as a side note, again, as, as a side all note. All of all Ward 3, isn't it? Uh, second by uh, Dave Burbank. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Did Kyle, do you have something to add to that? Just, we used our uh, new pavement management. Uh, software that we created in house to identify these streets. So, uh, Ward 3, the southwest portion of town, rated the lowest um, of the f four quadrants we looked at. So, we're we're trying to be equitable about our where we're doing these. So, Kyle, <laughs> quick comment. Um, we're doing work on Bridge Street also on this summer. Correct uh, with the landscaping. Um, potentially, we're okay. we're doing the survey now. We've got that listed as a project for later this year. Um, and then Mosier also, or Lamont Road, Lamont Road, and uh, North Cedar. Okay, so technically, we're going to have quite a mess in the southwest side. Yes. Okay. <laughs> to be clear. Dave Burbank will be providing his services for anyone that needs uh, to be taken. I'll get a traffic vest. Take okay. care of it. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is 3.3.2 uh, resolution 4-17 4 to approve the state of Minnesota joint powers agreement on behalf of the city attorney and police department and court data services subscriber amendment to the CJD and subscriber agreement. That's a lot. That we'll is a lot. Chris on that one. Thank you, Greg. This is a, a, another kind of housekeeping uh, resolution. Uh, this is a renewal of an existing uh, joint powers agreement. We are required by law to have the council approve the joint powers agreement and a court amendment as well. Um, so this allows our, our um, police department to use systems, tools, and connectivity provided by the state of Minnesota and um, the, uh, let's see, Bureau of Criminal Apprehension and Department of Public Safety. So staff would recommend uh, the city of Oatana continue using those systems and tools provided by the use of these agreements by approval of resolution 4-17. Thank you, Chris. Any questions? Questions of Chris? Uh, there being none, what are the council's wishes? Motion to approve. Motion by Brent Svenby to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Doug Voss. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That ends the business portion of our uh, meeting tonight. We now will go to uh, public comments. And I would ask that whoever wants to comment come to the microphone, sign in, and please limit your comments to two minutes or less and on items not on the agenda. Roger Wasik, 646 East Vine, and Kevin, don't start the top uh, to stopwatch. I it's going. <laughs> one page. <laughs> um, I have uh, excerpts from a book that I recently read called The uh, Wild Wisdom of Weeds, 13 Essential Plants for Human Survival. And this is by Katrina Blair, copyright 2014. And this is just a, a snippet of uh, uh, what I found most interesting in, in this book. In 1957, the United States imported more than 100,000 pounds of dandelion root for use in pharmaceuticals. 
A serving size, one cup of fresh greens has a daily requirement of beta carotene, calcium, iron, and potassium. It contains more vitamin A than any other green. It contains approximately 7,000 units per ounce as compared to 1,200 for lettuce and 1,275 for carrots. Dandelions are a great source of magnesium, phosphorus, copper, sodium, choline, lecithin, biotin in the soil. In addition to a very good source of dietary fiber. It is rich in vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, alpha tosopherol, zinc, and magnesium. As a complete protein, dandelions contain all eight essential amino acids in addition to many of the B vitamins, including B1, diamond, B2, riboflavin, B5, B9, B6, B9, folate, and B12. The green leaves contain significant amounts of pectin, a soluble fiber that prevents constipation. Dandelions accomplish this in part by their ability to encourage beneficial flora to thrive in the colon and inhibit unfriendly bacteria. The greens also act as a digestive tonic, assisting the breakdown of undigested fats and proteins. The bitter quality supports the secretion of bile and the digestive enzymes in the stomach. Dandelions are also beneficial for the condition of diabetes. They contain a source of levolin, which has the same composition as insulin and allows the liver to con convert fructose into glycogen without requiring the body's secretion of insulin. This creates less stress on the pancreas and maintains an even blood sugar for optimum energy. In addition to improving the function of the pancreas, dandelions also support efficient functioning of the spleen, kidney, liver, and stomach through promoting blood circulation. Dandelion is a rich source of chlorophyll. The body efficiently utilizes the chlorophyll content in the leaves for rebuilding the blood. The chemical structure of hemoglobin and chlorophyll are almost identical, with the main difference being that hemoglobin contains iron, where chlorophyll has magnesium. This gives the body the necessary nutrients to help to be able to prevent anemia. Dandelion leaves are a rich source of vitamin K, which helps eliminate the excessive buildup of acidic crystals that create the symptoms of gout. The high mineral content of the leaves also gives strength to the teeth and increases bone density in the body. Dental research conducted at Indiana University demonstrates how dandelions inhibit plaque buildup on the teeth, while the chlorophyll they contain helps eliminate bad breath at the same time. And finally, the granddaddy of all, my mom, this be the author's mom, used dandelion as one of the greens in the process of, of eliminating the pain and congestion from rheumatoid arthritis. She was diagnosed with arthritis when she was 17 and followed a Western standard practice of medicine for 12 years. This includes multiple surgeries and over 95,000 medically prescribed pills with all the side effects. 95,000. She did not see improvement in her arthritic condition during this time and in fact her mobility continued to degrade to the point where she could no longer walk. When I was two years old, she was inspired to juice fast. After about four days of drinking raw liquids, her joint pain and congestion disappeared almost totally. This experience was a huge epiphany for her and this led her on a whole new path of life. She was inspired to continue her education and earned a master's degree in holistic nutri nutrition. As a result of her experience, our family began the tradition of drinking green juices approximately twice a day. Dandelions and comfrey were two of the main greens we harvested from our backyard. At 71, my mom no longer has arthritis and her mobility has returned to active walking and even biking, rafting, playing the piano, and sledding. Just wanted to read that because we spent a lot of tax dollars to eliminate or try and eliminate and control dandelions. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Seeing no one else, we'll go to council comments, and we'll start with uh, Jeff. Well, no comment tonight. No comment tonight? Okay. Uh, Nate? Uh, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year, and welcome Doug to the council. Thank you. Dave? Happy new year, and welcome Doug. Thank you. Another happy new year, and welcome Doug. Brent? Same thing, happy new year, and welcome Doug. Doug, how about you? Do you have something to say tonight? Well, it's been very interesting. It's going to be fun. Uh, got a lot of respect for all you gentlemen for doing this up here. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying to help you out. Thank you. Mayor Tom. 
Well, first I'd just like to thank Kyle and the engineering department for putting together a good list for next year. Every town needs great infrastructure and the commitment that engineering and city council puts towards spending dollars on fixing an infrastructure is well received and well appreciated. The other thing is that the Human Rights Commission always puts together a program on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, this year that program is on January 16th. It's up at Plaza Marina. They put together a 6.30 breakfast and the program starts at 7 and the public is welcome to attend that. And the last thing is my compliments to Troy for getting everything completed on the Arnold House and the Arnold House sale. I look forward to Ace Hardware building onto that. And I really thank the Old Town of People's Press and Todd for the great article he had in his column on Sunday with some of the highlights of the past Arnold House. Thank you. Chris? The only thing I had is uh, just to check in with the council. We're trying to uh, set up a date for our strategic planning as we do every year. Um, February 23rd is a Thursday. Uh, just wanted to see if that worked for everybody, like an afternoon. If you could block out that afternoon. If I can get some head nods, I can move forward with. Should work yeah, for most. February 23rd. February 23rd, it's a Thursday. It's like one, two. Did we normally do that in two sections? We do, but we think this year we can get um, get it done in one session. Okay. Yep. So late afternoon, are we talking then? Well, we'd want to start probably two or three. Okay. If that works for everybody. And then we go into the evening till probably about eight. Okay. Okay. Anything else? That's all I had, sir. And I would just like to welcome Doug and, and uh, to our, the council here and wish everybody a happy and prosperous new year. With that being said, looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, 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 oh. We have coffee with council this Saturday at Thank 8 you. Yeah. At Thanks, Brent. Brent. Yes. Right. Mm. Coffee with the council this Saturday at 8.30 at High V. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> motion by Kevin to adjourn. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Brent. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We're done. Okay.